Have you ever clicked a link and waited? Not just for a second, but for what felt like an eternity. In 2015, the web looked modern, responsive, interactive. React had taken over. Single-page apps were everywhere. But something underneath was broken. Pages bloated with JavaScript, SEO failed, load time stretched. Users felt the lag. Developers fought invisible fires. Everyone knew the symptoms. No one knew the cure. Until a self-taught hacker from Argentina stepped in. Not from Google, not from Facebook. From a small startup with a bold idea to rebuild the future of the web from the inside out. This is the story of Next.js, the framework that dared to fix the web, and the company behind it that might just control it. In the early days of the web, things were simple. A browser asked for a file. The server replied with HTML. No JavaScript, no interactivity, no waiting. It was fast, but lifeless. Every user got the same static experience. Then came dynamic servers, personalized HTML. Websites became more than documents, they became destinations. But users still wanted more. And in the summer of 1995, a caffeine-fueled engineer named Brendan Eich gave them a gift. A new scripting language, built in 10 days, embedded into Netscape. They called it JavaScript. It wasn't perfect, in fact it was messy. But it made static pages interactive. Then came Ajax, and with it, dynamic data, without page reloads. Suddenly, the browser became a canvas for real software. And just like that, the web grew up. As web complexity exploded, developers were desperate for structure. That's when React arrived. It didn't care about servers. It didn't care about routing. It cared about one thing, the UI as a function of state. A simple idea, yet revolutionary. React introduced components. JSX, declarative rendering. It changed how we built interfaces forever. But there was a cost. React was only a library, not a framework. Developers had to stitch together Webpack configs, Babel plugins, routers, API handlers, and deployment pipelines just to make it work. React made frontends elegant. But building full apps? That was still a nightmare. Somewhere in San Francisco, a self-taught hacker named Guillermo Rauch saw the mess. He wasn't from Silicon Valley royalty. He was born in Argentina, dropped out of school at 16, became CTO of LearnBoost at 18, built Socket.io before web sockets were cool. Rauk believed in open source, he believed in simplicity, and he believed the web could be better. In 2016, his new company, Zeit, launched a minimal tool for front-end deployment called Now. But Rauk had a bigger dream, a full-stack React framework with built-in routing, server-side rendering, and zero config. The team called it Risky. He called it Next.js. On October 25, 2016, they released it to the world, a tiny repo, open source, opinionated. It followed six core principles, zero setup, JavaScript everywhere, code splitting, server-side rendering by default, flexible data fetching, and one command deployment. It wasn't flashy, but developers were starving for sanity. Next.js gave them just enough structure to be dangerous, and the front-end world paid attention. One year later, something unexpected happened. The world rediscovered static. Next.js introduced incremental static regeneration, pre-rendered pages that could be updated after deploy. It was magic. The speed of static, the freshness of dynamic. No rebuild bottlenecks, no stale data, just performance, on demand. From blogs to product catalogs, the internet was reborn. And developers? They weren't just building websites anymore, they were building platforms. Before we continue, a quick but essential note, because building fast, interactive apps doesn't stop at the front end. Enter Convex, sponsor of this video, a full-stack TypeScript native backend as a service. If Next.js gives you the tools to craft rich, performant interfaces, Convex provides the backend muscle to make them dynamic, real-time, and scalable, with zero boilerplate and zero infrastructure headaches. But the real magic is Convex Chef, an AI-powered app builder that doesn't just generate placeholder code or static templates. Chef understands full-stack architecture. It automatically wires up authentication, file storage, background tasks, and real-time sync on top of Convex reactive data model. You describe the app, Chef builds it, fully functional, real-time, ready to deploy. Try it yourself, head to convex.link slash codesource. Describe the app you want to build and see just how far you can go without writing a single backend line. Convex and Next.js together, 
That's front-end velocity meeting back-end intelligence. Now, let's get back to Next.js's story. At the same time, another contender was rising, Gatsby. GraphQL powered, lightning fast, the darling of the Jamstack world. But Gatsby had a problem, complexity. Builds were slow, plugins broke, scaling was hard. Then came the final blow. They locked key features behind their own cloud service. The community rebelled, and silently, it shifted. From Gatsby to Next.js, from promise to reliability. Zeit rebranded as Vercel in 2020, a platform built for Next.js. Deploys became instant. Edge functions went global. Image optimization, CDN caching, middleware. But there was a catch. Next.js remained open source, yet its roadmap was tightly coupled to Vercel. Some called it Synergy. Others, a slow funnel toward lock-in. Blog posts emerged asking the hard question, are we building for the open web or for Vercel's ecosystem? Then someone checked their logs and saw something strange. Telemetry, enabled by default. Vercel was collecting anonymous usage data. They said it was to improve the framework. The community said, why didn't you ask? A firestorm erupted on GitHub. Vercel made telemetry opt-in, but the question remained, can we trust the framework we've come to depend on? In 2022, Next.js was everywhere. Twitch, TikTok, Netflix, OpenAI, even React's official docs now said, Next.js is recommended framework for React. But new challenges emerged. Astro, Remix, SvelteKit, each with their own philosophy, each rejecting the bloat of modern React apps. Developers began to wonder, did we trade simplicity for power or power for complexity? Then came Next.js 13, and with it a new paradigm, the app router, built on React server components, nested layouts, streaming, async everything. Powerful, flexible, future-proof, but also breaking. Suddenly old patterns stopped working, migration guides read like war journals, stack overflow filled with questions, was this evolution or disruption? As developers scrambled to adapt, another shift was quietly happening, one that no migration guide could prepare you for. March 21, 2025. A normal day, until it wasn't. Security researchers published a report that shook the web dev world. Next.js middleware was vulnerable. A critical flaw CVSS score 9.1. By manipulating a special header, attackers could bypass authentication entirely. Protected routes? Wide open. Thousands of apps built with edge logic suddenly at risk. Startups, agencies, enterprises, and most of them didn't even know. Reversal moved fast. A hotfix shipped within 24 hours. But it didn't matter. The damage wasn't in the code, it was in the confidence. When you let the framework handle everything, routing, auth, middleware, you gain speed. But you also give up control. And when something breaks, it breaks big. The incident wasn't just a bug. It was a signal that Next.js had become infrastructure. And when infrastructure fails, the whole web trembles. Today, Next.js is more than a framework. It's a standard. It made React full stack. It brought back server-side thinking. It pushed the edge forward. It's taught a new generation of developers to think in pages, layouts, and render strategies. And like jQuery, Angular, and React before it, it changed how we build. But legacy is never just about code. It's about what we give up along the way. Next.js fixed the broken web, but in doing so, did it create something new to break? Its future is tied to the edge, to Vercel, to the React team itself. And with competitors growing faster, leaner, and more transparent, the question isn't just what's next for Next.js. It's, what kind of web do we want? A fast one, a beautiful one, an open one, or all three?